I was through um, sort of day out of school really. In my primary school, the last year of primary, our local sports centre do a lot of sort of inclusion days where they get kids in to try loads of different sports and one of the sports we tried there was judo and um, it's something I'd so I tried previously sort of six years before and done half a lesson and then never gone back. But I thought you know, I'll give it another go, turned up and sort of from there on in really. I tried I tried it first of all because sort of self defence. I always thought oh, it'd be useful to know. Um, I like this individual sport as well. You know, you haven't got to rely on anybody else, it's you know, it's down to yourself really. And then once I started it, there's a good atmosphere in judo as well. Um, like in the club, like the club I trained at, it's a very friendly club. There's you know everyone had everyone else out, and it was just a good place to go. Uh, I've known Jamie for a long time. He's been on uh, the Welsh Judo program for a number of years. Firstly, through his club, uh, My State Judo, um, but more recently uh, as a member of the performance setup here since uh, September 2012. He's got good determination. He's motivated, like he'll get up early in the morning and train, whereas I wouldn't. And he's well, he eats healthy, his nutrition's good. Um, he's willing to train hard, no matter what you ask him, he'll do it. Well, it's every day I'll train it somewhere or another. I'll train. Ideally, three gym sessions a week, uh, two conditioning sessions a week, and then between one and two judo sessions a day. Yeah, it's very hard. Um, at the moment, where if in the sports centre we haven't got anywhere to cook ourselves, uh, the only puts a kettle in the room basically. So it's hard to. Obviously, it's very expensive if you want to eat healthily when you're getting some nice to cook before you if you're eating out. But um, the main thing is with the amount of training we do, you can. You know, you haven't got to eat perfectly, you're not going to put on masses of weight or anything. It's just trying to do the best you can with what you've got, really. Well, um, so through Welsh Studio, we've got um, you know access to sports science and things. We've got a head coach who sort of looks over all the training we do, strength and conditioning coaches, and um, look after the sort of judo side of things. Uh, the university are helpful as well with the high performance program. We are looked after with um, anything from sports psychology, physiotherapy, uh, organising sort of trips for backs, things like that. That's all helped out there. Um, Sort of personally, you've got family, uh, they've helped out massively. Uh, like for me to be able to afford this year of university, as well as sport, I've had sort of my grand lending me money temporarily so I can afford my tuition fees for this year, things like that. And my family, sort of parents, have put in a lot of time and money into getting me the competitions and things. We've got a purpose built dojo here now, okay, with uh, really good space and that gives us an advantage, especially for, for sparring. Um, you know, a lot of dojos are, are quite restricted for space. Um, we can get um, good numbers on for the sparring, and uh, it really helps the program a lot. So, um, get up sort of eight, possible, get ready. Depending on what time my lectures are, travel over to uh, UIC for a gym session over there. That'll be hour and a half of strength work. Um, complexes, various Olympic lifts, things like that. And um, when that's finished, come back across to uni, get changed, have a shower, sports centre first. In uni for a couple of hours, lectures, group meetings, various university stuff really. Then, if I've got a gap, go back to the sports centre for midday sort of judo technical training. Uh, if, depending on the day of the week, uh, metabolic conditioning circuit there, which is things like rope climbs, back rope training, um, kettlebells, 
then I'd probably back to uni again. If it's a course with season or whatever, I'd be doing some work there for a few hours. About six or seven o'clock, back over to Sport Wales. I'd do a couple of hours of contest training, sort of sparring, and that'd be usually about two hours worth of training. And then either I'd go, for, go into town for some food, come back, go to bed, same again, or like I say, if there's exams or coursework, I'll probably go back into uni for a few hours and then back home, food, bed, same again the next day. When you suffer an injury mm. and you've got a wrist injury at the moment, yeah. when you've had an injury like this or indeed throughout your career, how do you adjust your mentality to cope with it? <laughs> yeah, well, that is nice stuff. Like this week, I got injured on Sunday. Four days ago, five days ago, now. and um, usually you try to sort of just take it up, get on with it, try and put it to the side if it's not that bad. Um, two, three weeks, I thought, got looked at, got told, because I'm supposed to be fighting in Denmark this weekend, and then I told not to bother. Um, but still felt in my head that I could do it. Um, but you go, know, I ended up in a situation where the coach sort of proved to me that with the test fight situation that I wasn't fit enough to fight this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, when it's a competition you've been sort of preparing for for a while, um, you do obviously want to go. It's the first competition that would be, I could potentially qualify my space for the Commonwealth Games. Um, this was obviously one I wanted to compete in. But, you know, you have to think at the end of the day, if you go and compete, the chances are against the high-level opponents, you won't be able to contend, especially with sort of like a wrist injury. And you put in yourself, you know, psychologically that could affect you on a bad performance. So in the end they decided, you know, it's best not to compete. Injuries are part of the game. Um, it's a bad one, you know, but hopefully long term it's not too seriously uh, serious for him. And if you get an injury on the map, you don't often don't even notice it at the time because there's so much adrenaline going through. I have competed in Commonwealth tournaments before, um, but they're nothing like the multi-sport Commonwealth games. And the level of judo is a lot higher in the games than there is in the tournament. Uh, a lot of countries don't sort of compete if it's too far away. A lot of countries don't get funded to go to the tournament. So, you know, it's generally regarded as easier to get a medal in the tournament than the games. And just to experience something like that would be amazing. It's something that I know drives a lot of the players in Cardiff at the moment. The 66 kilo category is really strong actually in Wales. Um, we've got two other guys. Um, potentially we can send two in that weight. So Jamie's one of three at the moment, um, so it's going to go right down to the wire. I, I think for sure you, you should be in the medals. I think 100% fit, I would have put him as favourite for it. Um, obviously he's got to work around that injury now. A lot, so I want to be as good as him and go as far as him, and in the future I want to be in the same position as he is now. And uh, the attitude that he brings each and every time he comes to training, um, and yeah, it's a blessing when you've, you've got an athlete that, that has that enthusiasm and, and wants to be here. Dare we mention Rio? You know, anything can happen in judo, can't it? Um, in any sport really. Um, like four years is a very long time 